Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. Today I would like to follow up on a story that I went over five years ago on this channel when I did an interview with John Bumstead. That is the story of Apple banning third parties from allowing refurbished MacBooks to be sold on Amazon. Back in the day, if you were a refurbisher like John Bumstead, who I consider to be a top-tier colleague and top-tier refurbisher of Apple products, you would be able to sell used and refurbished products on Amazon. You had to advertise that they were used and refurbished, and you still had to have good ratings in order to get sales, but you were allowed to. Apple entered an agreement with Amazon where they disallowed anybody to sell Apple products on this marketplace unless they were authorized by Apple, which was a really crazy change because back in the day, if you wanted to sell products on Amazon, all you had to do, have a good rating, not rip people off. There was no such thing as the manufacturer said, I'm not allowed to sell your product on this e-commerce platform. That just wasn't a thing. So Amazon entered this agreement with Apple and afterwards, all of the independent refurbishers were kicked off the platform. They were no longer able to sell on Amazon. And I thought that this was a bad thing because it was going to increase prices to consumers. Most people are now using Amazon for shopping. Amazon has a much larger market share in 2018 through 2023 than they did back in 2004 through through 2018 while they were building their brand. And they didn't say upfront, they never said upfront, once we have greater market share, once everybody is using Amazon to buy things, we are going to give the manufacturer full control over who is allowed and not allowed to sell their products on our platform. This was never disclosed upfront. They wait till they have good market share in order to do that. And after they did that, prices went up to consumers. And I want you to think about this a little bit. If somebody like me, is able to replace a $10 display cable to make a machine work, and Apple wants almost $2,000 for the exact same repair, who do you think is going to be able to do more economically viable refurbishing? Who do you think is going to be able to offer a more competitive price to the customer? And above all, who do you think is going to be able to offer a better customer experience? One of the things that I go over on this channel very often is I will put my reviews that you find on Google and Yelp up against any Apple store in the country, and I guarantee ours will be better because we offer good customer experiences. If you ban third parties from selling on the platform, that will result in increased prices to consumers. But above all, the damage that gets done to the marketplace in general, when a company is very, very open and waits until they have all of this market share and they have everybody using their platform to just start kicking off the refurbishers, it's fairly damaging to the entire online marketplace. Those businesses that have now built businesses based on Amazon as the dominant seller cannot go back to what they were doing before because their websites have no traffic and nobody is using them anymore. I'm going to murder the dryer. I swear to God, I'm going to take a sledgehammer and bring it down with the power of Thor on that dryer. Any dryer that thinks that it, want, it should sing a song to you when it completes its cycle should be broken, ground down to dust, broken into bits and pieces, and set on fire in the backyard. And I will film when I do it to that one. I assure you, I will film it and it will be glorious. But anyway, so this brings me to this piece of news that you see today. It looks like in Spain, they are being fined for this, about 194 million euros. So let's go over this. This is going to be a little bit babelfished because I am using the translator in Brave Browser to read this to you. On October 31st, 2018, Amazon and Apple signed two contracts updating Amazon's terms as an authorized Apple distributor. They included several restrictive competition clauses that affected internet retail online sales of electronic products in Spain. Both companies agreed that only a series of distributors designated by Apple itself could sell Apple brand products to the Amazon website in Spain. More than 90% of the resellers who had been using the Amazon website in Spain for retail sale of Apple products were excluded of the main online market in Spain. Sellers not authorized by Apple to sell their products in the Amazon website in Spain lost a major sales channel. Insofar as said website conveys most of the online purchases of electronic products in Spain. Sales of Apple brand products in this online market were concentrated in the Amazon itself, drastically reducing competition between resellers of products and this brand. Sales of Apple products through the Amazon website in Spain by vendors based in other EU countries were reduced, therefore limiting the trade between member states and an increase in relative prices paid by consumers for the purchase of Apple products in said online market in Spain. And this is the part that I really want to hammer home, because a lot of the time when you see people talking about monopoly issues, they very rarely nowadays are able to bring up where the consumer is actually paying more money. They'll bring up how the consumer may be being abused in this way or that way, how they lack choice, but they're not usually able to bring up specifically how the consumer is paying more money in a way that's very easy to do here because the Apple authorized resellers are charging way more money than people like John Bumstead 
were for these products. And I want you to remember, who benefits from this agreement? Who benefits from this arrangement? Amazon gets the benefit because if you're going to buy a new one rather than a used one, the final value fee, which is a percentage of the overall product, will be higher because you're buying a more expensive product. Apple benefits because you're more likely to purchase a new product than a used product if the prices and the availability of the used products are worse. So if the prices of the used products are higher, and the availability is lower, the likelihood of you purchasing a new one where Apple has more profit is higher. Taking all of those MacBooks that John Bumstead has that he is refurbishing and ensuring that they stay put in his apartment, in his office, rather than being sold to people who will use them, increases the profit margin of both Amazon and Apple at the expense of the end user, at the expense of your personal choice, which is why I thought that this deal absolutely sucked, and I was genuinely surprised that regulators in the United States did nothing about it. It does seem that the FTC is finally starting to look into it five years later, which, again, is better than nothing. Through advertising clauses, Amazon and Apple limited the possibility that competing Apple brands could acquire advertising spaces on the Amazon website in Spain to advertise their products when certain searches for Apple products are carried out, as well as during the purchase product of said pro process of said products. And there is an example at the end over here. So if you're searching for a Samsung phone, you could actually advertise above and say, hey, check it out. We sell Oppo devices and we're better than Samsung. You should buy our device, not their device, which is what Oppo was doing to Samsung. However, that does not happen with Apple. If you search for an iPhone on Amazon, you can't advertise saying, hey, we have something better than the iPhone. Check us out. So Apple had this deal with Amazon, but nobody else got to have that deal with Amazon. The marketing limitation clauses established that Amazon will not be able to carry out, without Apple's consent, marketing and advertising campaigns that are specifically aimed at customers who have purchased Apple products on the Amazon website in Spain and encourage these customers to switch from an Apple product to one of the competition. We consider that these clauses, which jointly contribute to changing the dynamics of sale of Apple products on the Amazon website in Spain, restrict interbrand and intrabrand competition, and constitute a single and continuous infringement of Articles 1 of the Competition Defense Law and 101 of the Treaty of the Functioning European Union, which started with the adoption of the same in October 2018. The CNMC orders the cessation of conduct and a fine to the imputed companies of Apple of 143 million euros and the imputed companies of Amazon 50 million 510 thousand euros. Now, when you look at the net worth of Amazon and you look at the net worth of Apple and then you look at the net worth of me, this would essentially be like finding me a penny. These are trillion dollar companies. When you look at the worth of me as an individual and you just just basic math, just take off the number of zeros between their market cap and my net worth. This is like you're finding me a penny. Do you think that they care? Do you think Apple is sad? Do you think Amazon is sad? If people were paying final value fees of 6 to 10% on items that were $3,000 rather than items that were $400 for a period of five years, do you think they are actually negatively affected by paying what is essentially a penny and a fine? Not really. This fine does not do anything. And it's unfortunate that regulators in Europe are equally as cucked as regulators in the United States are. In the United States, you will often see that companies don't really get fined much of anything. This is something I went over in a video that I had done where not only were companies not being fined for breaking the law a lot, they weren't being fined at all. There were instances where you could fine a company $35,000 for breaking warranty law for each instance. Not overall, each instance. They were fined nothing. They were given a sternly worded warning. And what do you think every other company that was breaking that law did? They continued breaking the law because there's no penalty for it. And I appreciate 50 million euros is a lot more than zero, which is, let's face it, what they're probably going to get fined in America. But it's still a penny. And a penny is not going to get a company that abuses the marketplace to really change their behavior in a meaningful way or discourage them from trying that into the future. If they've made 500 million euros off of this or they made a billion euros additional off of this and you find them 50 million euros, I, I think that's a pretty good business plan. Sounds like something I would do again if I were in their position and I were a sociopath. Why not continue doing it if you're able to get away with it? And by finding them such a low amount, you're sending the message that they get away with it. Now, I know what people are going to say in this comment section. There are going to be the libertarian streaks, which is that they say something along the lines of this. People chose this. Now, I understand if somebody says, I don't want the government getting involved in my business at all. 
not just not even in the case in these cases not even when a company's worth trillions of dollars not even when they have serious effects in the marketplace i don't want the government being involved at all i can understand it even if i don't agree with it in every single instance the part that i've always taken issue with is when people say you chose this customers chose this they can they bought Am they bought from amazon if amazon had a banner on it in 2004 that said at some point in the future we will be where most people in every country go to purchase something once this future occurs, most sellers will be selling on our platform and 99% of their business will come from Amazon. At the point that that happens, we will restrict who can sell on our platform to who the manufacturer allows to sell on the platform. Do you think people's decision-making processes might have been a little bit different when purchasing their products off of Amazon if that banner existed in 2004? Of course they would have been different. And honestly, we're never going to know because companies that do these types of things, they change once they have the ability to change. Once they are a dominant force in the market, once they have the ability to absolutely screw you over, that is when they decide to screw you over. Most people who are buying off of Amazon are buying off of Amazon as a result of many of the smaller websites that used to sell products going away because Amazon kind of consolidated the marketplace. And by all means, again, they offered cheap shipping, they had a large selection, all of that stuff is great, and I think that they earned a lot of the marketplace that they were able to garner. But once they use that position in that marketplace to start screwing people and just flicking people off of the platform and flicking entire industries off of the platform and having these sweetheart deals with trillion dollar companies to try and get rid of the used marketplace, I think that sucks. And and once they have that dominant position, once they are abusing that dominant position, to find them what is essentially finding me or you a penny is a joke. To say that people chose that? Again, if that banner was on the website, sure. Without that website banner being on the website, I don't think people chose that at all. And above all, I really, really despise the comments that will show up in news articles like this where they will act like recycling is not a noble profession. When I, again, I'm not that old, but even when I was a kid, I remember recycling, refurbishing, this was a noble profession. You took items that other people were not using. You took stuff that was probably going to get sent on fire, sent to Africa, thrown in a river somewhere or something, and you took this garbage out of a landfill and you made it work so that people who could not afford to buy a new one would have something. This is a great profession. It's not a multi-level marketing scheme. You're going over to a landfill or a recycling facility. You're taking stuff that is not being used that would otherwise deteriorate the earth and just sit there as a waste. You're taking it you're making it work, and then you are allowing somebody who would not be able to afford that product to be able to purchase it so that they can be productive in their life with whatever it is that you gave them. Taking devices and tools that otherwise would have been trashed and keeping them from being wasted allows all of us as a whole, society as a whole, to be more productive. That tool is better off being used by a productive human being than it is sitting in the trash unless you're using it to browse Facebook or Twitter. But in all seriousness, that tool is better off being used. And recyclers were the noble people, the noble profession that decided to do this. There's also a very specific set of skills that you need to be a good recycler or refurbisher. You have to have a detective's mindset. You have to be very good at solving these types of random and complicated problems across numerous different devices and industries in order to be competent as a recycler. And those are skill sets, those problem-solving skill sets, those detective-like skill sets that apply very well to other other fields. So people who get into recycling and refurbishing that are really good at it, that wind up being those 4.9 and 5 star rated, tend to be very good at solving problems across numerous different fields and in different areas of society. I think that this is a great field, not just because it benefits society, but also because it encourages the teaching of a skill set and the learning of a skill set that is beneficial in many other ways. Also, here's the kitty. It just reappeared. Schrodinger's cat on RossmanGroup.com. And they enjoy seeing the smile on customer faces when they pay 50 to $200 for something and they're able to use it versus the $1,000 that they would have had to pay buying something new that they cannot afford. It makes them happy and it's good for society. And over the past, it's really only the past three to five years where Right to Repair is starting to finally gain momentum and become popular. I really dislike how recyclers are being portrayed as some sort of troll that sits under the overpass with a knife waiting to rip off anybody who's walking under that overpass on a dark night on the way to the parking lot and I don't like the fact that recyclers are not pushing back more. I really wanted to see a lot more pushback from not just people who watch my channel, but also recyclers themselves when this came out in 2018. And if recyclers are not willing to stand up for themselves, if they're not willing to demonstrate and make very, very clear through a grassroots PR campaign how you make the world better, how your customers being happy has resulted in a better world, then 
you guys are going to continue to get thrown into the bus. It makes me sick how many forums and how many comment sections I go to where I see all these comments going over how recyclers are there to facilitate the sale of stolen devices, how they are there and they go out of their way to get the most garbage parts possible. They just, they, they, you know, they go to the bath and they turn a bidet on full speed and with the first poop nugget that comes out, they take that and they install it into my product just so that they could save eight cents. Recycling was a noble profession and I say was because the sentiment when I was younger was that you were doing a good thing. And I see that sentiment slowly changing and I think it's up to us to ensure that that doesn't happen. I don't want to see a world where recycling is not allowed. I don't want to see a world where the world like Amazon is a dominant online marketplace. And not only are they kicking recyclers and resellers off of the platform, but the public goes along with it and is like, yeah, that's a great thing. It would be very easy to have a drop down menu. New, used or refurbished, manufacturer authorized, used and refurbished, random dude like John Bumstead. Very easy to do that if you want quality controls. If you have problem with quality, cool. New, used slash refurbished from the manufacturer or manufacturer's authorized resellers, random dude like Lewis or John Bumstead. And let them read the reviews of us and let them make their own informed decision. If I am selling a product for $300 because I fix it, by replacing a display cable, and Apple replaces it with a $2,000 repair, if I can sell that product for $300, and I have good reviews, as you can see over here, my refurbishing, in my opinion, is top-notch, and Apple, or Apple's reseller, is selling that same product for $900 with the same specifications, let us compete. This is what would be better for the marketplace in general, and I think that's the right thing to do. And above all, I appreciate it, Spain. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Can you add some zeros to the fine? If you wouldn't mind. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now. Look at that berry. Isn't she cute?